Hey guys, um, let's talk a little bit about the real start and early days of these 351 4V Cleveland uh, Pro Stock um, drag cars and engines. Now, most likely when they first started off at that, you know, 72, 73 period, they most likely were just flat tappet um, cam deals, you know what I mean? And uh, probably just running uh, your normal Holly 4150 style carburetors, not your dominators at this point. And you'll just see here on this next video um, that, you know, it's all 60 foot with these cars and it's all, you know, um, uh, you know, lightweight, 60 foot action. And you can just tell by their trap speeds and always say a trap speed is an indication of what uh, real horsepower you have in that particular car when you weigh it up, you know, as far as like um, power to weight sort of thing. And these early days just clearly show what type of power they were running. And these were quick cut 60 foot lightweight drag cars. Here's the world champion Wayne Gap. Using only gasoline, they are limited to two four barrel carburetors and considerable chassis modifications to allow them to run elapsed times in the high eights and low nines and over 150. An extremely close race, Bob Glidden, 918, Wayne Gap, a 9. All right, let's slow down for a second. Now, take a look at Bob Glidden's uh, uh, 918 pass at the mile per hour he's running. Clearly shows that it's a, um, it's all in the 60 foot. You know what I mean? It's not so much the horsepower's doing all that work there. I mean, it is, yeah, sure. But what I'm getting at is lightweight, you know what I mean? Super, super fast 60 foot times that bring in the ET. Now, you compare, you compare that with my deal uh, that you can see here. Now, I know that I'm weighing in at 3,050 pounds race ready, and I know those little pinos in those, in those days were nowhere near that. I'll tell you that for sure. Just my blower kit's 150 pounds, so I'll just give you an indication. Um, and look at the trap speed I have. I got a good 10 mile per hour on top of that with the same ET. Yeah, sure, I had issues, and I am heavier, but I, sh I, I, I can sure tell you what type of horsepower I'm making. Both cars approaching the staging beams, the classic Ford versus Chevrolet, and leaving the line together, Glidden with the front wheels high in the air, drifting close to the edge of the track. He keeps it down the straight and narrow, though, and Glidden, the easy winner, a fine 8.68 seconds. His speed, 156 Moving along to around 77 now, there's a big difference here in uh, combinations and in horsepower and ET and trap ahead. speeds. So now they've the gone for the field intake, they've gone for uh, solid roller cams now, and they've gone for the high port uh, exhaust plates and, you know, um, uh, cams to suit that type of a head now where you've got a good exhaust flow over its intake, right? The ratio there. So you can see now, they're, you know, they're, they're on their game as far as chassis, as far as 60 foot and 10 mile per hour. And now they're showing more, you know, upwards of around 700 plus flywheel horsepower to sort of run those trap speeds and ETs in those, um, in that weight car. But you'll see this big block Chef Camaro cutting a trap speed of 870 at 150 mile per hour again proving it's all 60 foot now that's a hell of an ET for a mile an hour like that again you'll see Glidden here proving again it's all start line action and um, you know running an awesome ET with that trap speed again showing that it's all 60 foot and these cars definitely would be in the low one twos you know if anything possibly the high one ones in 60 foot action so what i'm trying to get at is everything at the end of the day is about power to weight and that 60 foot time when it comes to quarter mile racing now a lot of people throw up in the air just horsepower figures right it's not that you got to look at the complete package and you know 60 foot can make or break your uh, quarter mile pass and a good indication always um is the mile per hour so if you've got a car that's not quite um on its game the mile per hour on that pass is an indication of where you should be at and it's just up to you to keep working at that and get it there something that i've actually experienced uh, myself, you know, there was a bit of a downfall with my own situation, uh, racing my own uh, supercharged um, uh, power to Cleveland. 
but um, something I'll probably do a video on next or real soon about 60 foots and indication of what real power you have um, instead of you know guessing games and uh, sort of um, you know prettying up your horsepower figure when 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 that's not right so in the early days of these uh, pro stockers I've always said in previous videos I think they've started life, these 4V um, headed Clevelands at around 600 flywheel horsepower and they've worked them away. They've worked their way up to about 750 flywheel horsepower by the end of the 70s. And you know, the mile per hour over the weight of the cars, it just clearly shows that. You know, there's been talk of, you know, uh, these Clevelands made 850, you know, they made 900, they made 820. I mean, did they? There's not one um, uh, person in the days, doesn't matter if it's Roush or Glidden, uh, uh, that, that, that have dynoed and released horsepower figures. They've always just, you know, been people that have speculated. And I know down here in Australia, you know, uh, I remember one um, pro stock car in the late 80s or early 90s, uh, I'm pretty sure it was a Camira, uh, 350 Chev powered, you know, it was a four speed um, Lenko, and I remember they dynoed it right on 600 flywheel horsepower, and this thing went eight nines um, at under, well under 150 mile, and it was like, you know, in the mid 140s. So that's, you know, that's that's more on, on the game there, that's, that's more of a, uh, you know, true figure to the outcome, um, that example there. But um, yeah, 